to the Coders Campus Podcast, where you'll learn how to code from one of the best teachers in the industry. Whether you're an absolute beginner or a seasoned pro, the Coders Campus Podcast will teach you what you need to know to master the art of programming. And now, your host, Trevor Page. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to this next episode of the Coders Campus Podcast. Thanks so much for joining. We've hit episode number 28 now, and we're going to be diving back into our, uh, you know, soiree, if you will, into the JavaScript language. Uh, today, again, we're doing some pretty fundamental stuff here, some pretty basic stuff, uh, but it's very important to go over. Um, today, we're going to be talking about for loops in JavaScript. So just like an if statement, a for loop in JavaScript is just another kind of control structure. Um, if you don't remember what a control structure is, uh, you need to go back to, I think, episode 26 is when we talked about if statements. Um, the, the for loop, in any case, the main purpose of the for loop is to force a JavaScript engine to rerun lines of code uh, a specific number of times. This is in stark contrast to the if statement, which is used to potentially skip certain lines of code. So the for loop's all about rerunning the same lines of code a specific number of times. If statement will skip certain lines of code. Uh, the processes of rerunning lines of code over a specific number of intervals is known as iterating. Okay, so the programming jargon, if you will, for the for loop is to say I'm iterating through my for loop. Okay, which just means that you're rerunning the same lines of code over and over again, like we just talked about. So uh, what's the purpose of the for loop? You know, re rerunning the same lines of code over and over again may seem uh, a little bit strange to someone who is new to programming, but let me assure you, it is incredibly useful and opens up a huge number of possibilities when it comes to creating uh, useful programs and so on and so forth. Um, hugely useful. So let's talk about the syntax uh, for the for loop in JavaScript. If you come from a Java programming background, it will look very similar with the ex small exception uh, of the introduction of the dynamic typing concept, which we talked about also in a previous episode. So the for loop in the JavaScript language uh, look, well, sounds and looks something like this. I can't really say it looks like this because we're on a podcast, but it sounds like this. Uh, you type in the word for. Okay, it's a, the keyword is the for keyword. It's very important to use. Uh, it is in lowercase. Make sure you always use lowercase. Um, then you open a round bracket, and here's where you initialize your sort of iterating variable. In this case, we use the var keyword. So we say var i equals zero. The variable name can be whatever you like. I choose I because that's sort of a standard. People always use I or J or K when they're using um, variable names for iterating through a for loop. Uh, in this case with JavaScript, we use the var keyword because that is the keyword that we need to use in JavaScript to initialize. And in, in, well, I guess you could say instantiate, but initialize a variable. Uh, so we use the var keyword, var I equals zero. Then we use the semicolon to break it up into the next section of the for loop. This is where you define sort of the uh, the range and how far the for loop should go. So here we say i is less than 10, for example. And then we use another semicolon. And then we have i++, plus plus, which is just a shorthand for saying i equals i plus 1. So i equals i plus 1 is the same thing as saying i++. Plus plus. It's just a shorthand. It's easier to write. Coders are lazy. This is what we do. Uh, and then you close the square bracket. Um, and then you can open a curly bracket. And this is where you define this. This is the scope of the for loop. And this is where your code is going to go uh, that you want to have iterated over. And you can close your curly bracket to end the scope and end the, you know, the, the contents of the, of the for loop. So really, this, this is very similar to um, the Java language. Except, like I said, in the Java language, we would have said for with an open bracket, uh, uh, you know, round bracket, and then we would have said um, int i equals zero. So we, we would have actually defined a data type. Uh, in this case, we're using JavaScript, so it's dynamic typing, so we don't need to define a data type. We just say var i equals zero. So, uh, you know, for those of you who haven't, you know, seen or heard of for loops like this before, this likely looks or sounds like a bunch of random letters and symbols, um, but they all have their purposes. So, um you know, we can take a look at a sort of more generic version of the JavaScript's for loop in terms of like talking about what each part of it does. So, you know, we had the for loop. We know the for keyword is very important. That should be self-explanatory. You need to use that keyword. And then we obviously have our opening of the round brackets, right? So you open the round bracket and then you close the round bracket. And in between the round brackets, you put in the, the you know, special stuff. This is where the cool stuff goes in the for loop that tells the, the JavaScript engine how to work with the for loop. So the first part of the for loop is going to be your initialization statement. 
Okay, this is where we initialize things. This is where we seed um, our variables, if you will, and start it at a certain number. Typically, we start at zero, but you can start a for loop at whatever number you want to have it start at, right? Uh, so we can initialize it. This is where we do our, you know, var i equals zero. We're initializing i and we're setting it equal to zero. Then we do a semicolon, and the next part is the termination condition statement. Okay, the termination condition is saying, when should we stop looping over the code? Because you don't want to loop over, over, and over, and over you know, to infinity and beyond, <laughs> like, anyway, uh, you don't want to do that. So that is, you need, you need to specify a termination statement. So in our case, in our example, we said i is less than 10. So while i is less than 10, we're going to be iterating over and over, okay? And then um, we, you know, separate it with a semicolon. And the last part of it is the sort of iteration statement. So this is where, how we're telling it how to iterate through the loop, Okay, so in our example, we said I++, which literally means increment I by one every single time. But we could have done, you know, I minus minus if we wanted to. We could have, you know, said iterate by reducing I's value by one. Okay, now that would break the for loop because then we would need to change the initialization and termination conditions because we're going backwards through a loop. Uh, but a better one would be maybe we want to iterate instead of iterating by one, we want to iterate by two. So we could say I equals I plus two. So then it, you know, iterates by two instead of by one, all right? So essentially, you know, that's the breakdown of the for loop structure. Uh, it gets very easy once you start to use it in the real world. Um, like I said, if you've never heard of it before, then this could be very confusing stuff. All right, so we're sort of familiar with the construct of the for loop, what it looks like, at least what it sounds like. Um, but you might be asking yourself, well, when you when would you want to use one of these? Um, the best way to answer that is with a, an example. So uh, let me talk about some code that I could use to do something uh, really simple, uh, which is output the numbers 1 through 15 to the console. Okay, so how would we do that? Well, if we weren't using loops, we would say, you know, console.log, because that's how you output something to the console. Say console.log, open uh, parenthesis, and then you put, a, you know, number one, and you close a parenthesis and you do a, a semicolon. And then, you, you know, you hit enter and you have a next line of code. You say console.log, you know, bracket two, close bracket, and semicolon. Uh, hit enter, console.log, Open bracket three, close bracket, semicolon. Console.log, open bracket four, open bracket five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, you know what I mean? You type out 15 lines of code, 15 console.log statements, each printing out um, the unique number that you want to have printed out to the console. Silly program, I know, but I'm trying to illustrate a point here. So this is an example of what a for loop uh, is needed for right? This, this is a perfect use case for a, a for loop. So how do I know this? How do I know that I can say this is perfectly suited for a for loop? Uh, because there is some sort of series of a repetition in terms of coding going on here. We're, we're repetitiously writing out, is that a word? Uh, writing out the uh, the same lines of code over and over again with just a small variation between them. Console.log, 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 log, 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 log. You know, it's the same code copy pasted 15 times. The only difference is what's inside the brackets changes. Okay, so whenever you see this sort of repetitive code, it's probably a good idea to consider using some sort of loop. In this case, since we have a finite number of numbers that we want to output to the console, um, we know we want to output 1 to 15. Since it's the specific number, it's 15 specifically, that's where the, the for loop is the perfect choice. So for this example, how can we have the same output instead of in 15 lines of code? You know, we want to use a for loop. Well, we can say for, open bracket, var i equals one okay we want to start with one here because the console.log the first line was console.log one okay so we say var i equals one semicolon so that's our initialization statement now we need our sort of termination condition what is the termination condition it should terminate when uh, we hit the number 15 so we can say i is less than or equal to 15 okay or i is less than 16 depends uh, you know Six of one, half dozen of the other. Depends on how you want to write it out. Uh, if you want to type in less characters, you could do, you could do uh, i is less than 16. If you want to be more explicit and say, hey, this is how I want it done, i is less than or equal to 15. But literally the two do the exact same thing. So semicolon and then i++. plus plus. So you say i++ plus plus because i it should only increment by one at a time because we typed out all 15 numbers one at a time, one after the other. Okay, so that's your for loop construct. Open your curly bracket console.log, open bracket, i, close bracket, semicolon. So when you say console.log i, you're outputting the contents of the i variable into the console. And what happens is 
i is what's changing in the for loop i will be incremented by one every single time so it'll go through the for loop over and over and over again and increment i by one by one by one by one and it'll keep outputting that number to the console so we're going to get the numbers one through 15 outputted to the console so what are the inner workings of the for loop then how, how you know what's what's going on in our for loop um you know first it will run the initialization statement like i said that first part of the of the code in the for loop it goes in there and it runs that initialization statement so let me back up a second. I'm talking about like how the JavaScript engine will sort of go through the code of the for loop and actually, you know, how it will choose to run certain parts of the actual statement itself. So we're literally going through how a the compiler or the um, the engine, the JavaScript engine, will sort of traverse the code, right? All right, so now having said that, let me go back into what I was saying. So first thing that it will do, like I said, is run the initialization statement. And it's, but it's important to know it only runs this part of the code once because you only need to initialize the variable once. You don't want to initialize the variable every single time because then it'll keep resetting the variable's value to whatever the initialization value is. Okay, so that's the, cl that's the code that declares the variable i and sets it equal to 1 in our last example. Okay, var i equals 1. That's the initialization statement. Boom, it runs that code once as soon as it goes into the for loop. Cool. So now that the for loop has declared the variable that it will be using to sort of execute through the loop, um, it then moves on to check and see if it should terminate the looping. This might seem a bit silly because, you know, you've just started to, you know, initialize your stuff. It, you know, it's, it might seem silly to just immediately, as soon as you declare the variable, check and see if you should terminate the statement. You know, it's a bit silly, but, you know, it's important to do that because if it is, you know, indeed outside the bounds, it just won't, you know, it won't execute the for loop and it'll just keep on going. Um, but, you know, it, it's a good thing that it does that because then it's predictable. We know it's going to behave the exact same way every single time. So barring the, you know, silly circumstance of having it immediately terminate and never do anything and execute anything in the for loop, um, let's move on. So since it uh, checks to see if it should terminate, um, it runs the termination condition, right? The clause or whatever that you would set, which at this point is, uh, you know, I less than or equal to 15 is what we had said. But since I was just initialized as one, it's checking to see if one is less than or equal to 15. So last time I checked, that what that statement was true. I is indeed less than or equal to 15. So it will execute the code inside the scope of the for loop because if the termination condition um, is still within you know the bounds, it still says it's true. The you know it evaluates the true. If it evaluates the true, it'll go in and execute the contents of the for loop that you've you've uh, outlined as with the scope, right? The curly brackets. That's the scope of the for loop. So the code inside of the scope of the for loop is indeed the console.log open bracket i close bracket statement. Okay, console.log i. And remember that the current value of i is 1, so it'll just output 1 to the console. Fantastic. So then what does it do? Well, then, since there's only one line of code in the scope, or in the, inside the scope of the for loop, uh, it will go up to, uh, back to the top of the for loop. So just essentially, once we hit the, the end scope of the for loop, it goes back up into, uh, the top part where you would, you know, outline your, um, your, you know, three different parts of the for loop, um, it, it goes in, and does the entire loop again. But before it tries to loop through, it has to go through a process that it always goes through. This is the process that the JavaScript engine and really probably any modern language goes through when it's iterating through a for loop, um, which is it goes and runs the code in the iteration part of the code, the iteration statement. Okay, this is the third of the three parts inside the for loop. So it goes in, runs the iteration statement, which in this, in this case is I++, which increments the value of I by one. And then it runs the code in the termination condition again. So it always checks the termination as soon as it's made any iteration. So we've iterated up to two now. We've I equals I plus one. So I equals one plus one. So one plus one is two. So I equals two. And then it checks the termination condition, right? The termination condition is, is two less than or equal to 15. All right, cool. So keep in mind that it always runs the code in the iteration statement, and then it runs the code in the termination condition statement over and over and over and over and over again until the termination condition evaluates to false. So for our example, like I said, it just keeps iterating uh, i equals i plus one goes to two, 
2 is less than or equal to 15, yes it is, so it iterates again uh, through the whole scope of the for loop, and then it will output the number 2 to the console, because that's what we've asked it to do. Then it hits the end of the scope, so it needs to go back and iterate, um, and possibly terminate, so you know, it iterates and then it, you know, it goes to 3, and then it checks the termination, is 3 less than 15, yes or no? Yes it is, so it goes in, iterates the, you know, the stuff inside the uh, scope of the for loop, goes back up and does the iteration condition, so i equals i plus 1, goes to 4, and then it checks the termination condition, condition is 4 less than or equal to 15. Yes, it is. So we keep iterating uh, and so on and so forth all the way until I become 16. Okay, so then we hit 16. So it says, hey, is 16 less than or equal to 15? Well, the answer to that question is false. So what happens? The loop terminates. And the result is that now we have outputted the numbers 1 through 15 to the console. So what happens when the loop terminates is it goes uh, it goes through the, the scope, goes to the end of the scope, and comes out the end of the scope down just you know one line below the end of the scope. So it won't run anything inside of the scope of the for loop if that termination condition evaluates to false. So it'll just skip the rest of that code and then go out the bottom. So in the end, the whole point to this entire discussion is that uh, the difference between the two uh, different examples that we were looking at, where I outputted console.log 15 times with 1 through 15, and our for loop, is that the output was identical. The output was the exact same, except that we wrote a lot less code. Uh, you could have fit everything in our for loop into two lines of code if you're, well, you really could have fit it into one line of code if you really wanted to. So one line of code versus 15, but if you fit it all into one line of code, then it's not as readable. So really, I'll call it four lines of code if, you, if you're, or, you know, three or four, depending on your preferences for how you want to write out your curly brackets. But anyway, the point is far less code, right? So thank Lord for the for loops. So in summary, the programming languages need loops. Okay, without them, we just wouldn't be able to create the programs that we have available today. Loops are not only a time saver, but we have uh, also saved the fingers and wrists of hundreds of thousands of programmers, possibly thwarting a global epidemic of carpal tunnel syndrome. So be sure to send a thank you letter to the creator of Loops. And if you're feeling generous and like you want to send some sort of thank you to myself uh, or to me, I should say, uh, I would love you to either review or rate and review this podcast if you haven't already done so. Uh, I believe you can do so via, what is it, coderscampus.com forward slash iTunes which all that does is just opens up iTunes in your on your desktop or wherever you are and allows you to rate and review the podcast. Or if you really want to support the show and you really want to get excited about it, I still have the lifetime access deal going on for Coders Campus. This is where you get access to all 15 plus courses that I create as well as any new videos every single week as I release them. Uh, you get lifetime access to all that stuff plus all the tests, assignments, and exercise files and access to the private Facebook groups. So if you get stuck and you need help, you can post a question in there and get help from either myself or someone in the community to get you unstuck and continuing to do what it is you want to be doing, which is creating cool programs. Um, so you can get at lifetime access to all that stuff. Stuff, uh, for just two ninety seven, one payment of two ninety seven, or three payments of ninety nine bucks. So really, that you know equates out to less than twenty dollars per course. And like I said, you're going to get access to new videos, therefore new courses every single week as I release the new videos and the new courses. So anything related to learning how to program, you're going to get access to. So essentially, you're paying less than twenty bucks a course right now, and then every single new course related to teaching you how to program is going to be essentially free. So if you are interested in that, you can check it out via coderscampus.com forward slash lifetime. Okay, lifetime, all one word. Hopefully you will be interested in doing that. Like I said, if, you, if you're loving these tutorials, if you're loving my energy, I just amplify that inside of these, uh, you know, these video tutorials, if you will, because I actually get to show you the code on the screen so you can actually see me programming. You can learn my sort of uh, tips and tricks and how I use uh, and interact with an IDE. You get to uh, really see how my mind works when it comes to debugging, when I, you know, hit problems and so on and so forth. You know, all the things that really can't come through a podcast, uh, this is where it's going to shine inside of this medium, which is the video medium. Plus, like I said, hey, tests, assignments, um, exercise files, private Facebook group, 
you can't go wrong with all that stuff. And for less than 20 bucks a course, uh, I believe it is the deal of the century. But of course, I'm going to say that because, hey, this is my stuff. But take my word for it. My students have consistently rated these courses uh, as a whole. Pretty much, I think it's over 90% right now uh, in terms of their happiness rating. So um, people love these courses. They've literally changed lives and uh, managed to get people real world jobs uh, just by going through them. So um, it's good stuff. I, I, I highly, highly recommend if, if you're going around the internet and learning from YouTube videos and, you know, trying to piece things together and are struggling with all that stuff. It's just, you know, it, some things it's absolutely worth making the investment in education is always worth making an investment in especially in the programming sector because uh, when you're learning something and you know you're learning it on the right track you're learning it in an organized fashion and you're able to get help when you need it uh, from especially from other members in that same community um, it just helps to accelerate your learning curve it helps you to reach the goal uh, of being able to become a solid programmer a lot faster uh, than if you were trying to do it sort of on your own for free I know free has its merits but but sometimes, uh, you know, you get a lot when you pay for this kind of stuff. So that's my two cents. Take it or leave it. Uh, if you're just happy with consuming the content that is on the podcast for free, that is perfectly fine by me. So cool. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. I can't wait to see you guys in the next episode. Uh, I believe we should be doing another JavaScript episode. I do have a couple more of the, you know, uh, self-taught programmer sort of um, fun interviews that I've done with people. Uh, I'll be releasing those, I guess, over the next couple of weeks and or months. So look forward to hearing those. But uh, yeah, we should be talking about JavaScript again next week. Probably the while loop is my guess is what we're going to be tackling next. So can't wait to see you in that episode. Take care, yourself. Happy learning. And bye for now. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Coders Campus podcast. But before you go, Trevor has a favor to ask you. In order to keep these episodes free, he'd love for you to leave a rating and review the podcast on iTunes. Just go to coderscampus.com slash review to leave your own rating and review of the show. So if you have 30 seconds to spare right now, please help out by leaving a rating and review via coderscampus.com slash review. It will ensure that you continue to get these awesome free podcast episodes each and every week. So if you like free swag, head on over to coderscampus.com slash review. Happy learning.